Hi, Rob Fletcher. Welcome back to Muscle and Fitness Plus Talk Show. I am here today with Christian Palmer and Dr. Fate. Dr. Fate, the fitness physician, he is the founder of Primex, a weight loss preventative health age management and peak performance company that provides nutrition products, educational materials, approved weight loss, pharmaceuticals, physician grade supplements, hormone therapy, and personalized health plans for maximum health, vitality, performance, and wellness. And the top gun trainer over here, my guy, Christian Palmer, men's health specialist, men's health fitness and nutritional specialist, has a channel on Muscle Fitness Plus. Make sure you check it out. It's awesome content, Relentless Fitness and Nutrition. So thank you, Christian. Thank you, Dr. Fate, for joining us today. Today's topic, men's health. we got to get it right. You have to dial in on yourself. So Christian and I, he's a co-host on my podcast. We're talking, Dr. <coughs> Fate, you were on it also. And you know, there's a lot of things that we can do you know, men and women, but this is specific to men. So, uh, Christian, I want to start off with you because you, you, you also, and you're dialed in. Just a reminder how I'm always encouraging trainers and doctors to connect in a line before we do anything. Christian, emphasize the importance of how that goes by aligning with Dr. Fee. It's huge. It's what I say, how the rubber meets the road. And in order to come across the information you need from individuals like Dr. Fee, you have to marry that through the people that they deal with, right? I have clients who I coach with nutrition and who some of them I train, and they wanna know more about how can I optimize my health, right? I'm not feeling great like I used to. I'm not feeling vigorous. I don't have the same drive or thirst for life like I used to. I wanna play with my kids without pain. I wanna wake up and feel energized like I wanna attack the world, right? Now, I can do as much as I can with nutrition, but beyond that, the body has hormones that it operates on, and if they're not optimized, that's where I would guide you to Dr. Fate, and then he can get you squared away with blood work, and then well, let's have a lot of go on that, and then we're going to go to Dr. Fate. So, mm -hmm. Christian, one of the first things you know, I've worked with you for a while. So, one of the first things, you know, we're talking about a lot frequently is uh, getting that blood work dialed in on. Mm -hmm. So, when you go with a client, uh, let the viewers know what's what's your first uh, requirements before taking the client on. Okay, so well, the first thing I'll ask about is lifestyle, stress, sleep. You know, what are you doing on a daily basis? Are you eating well? It's a simple topic, but a lot of people don't really think about it. Are you sleeping well? When you do sleep and you wake up, how do you feel? Do you feel energized? Do you feel like, I gotta go right back to sleep? And getting these things addressed, that's the first thing that we'll tackle. Even if they say, I'm interested in something like HRT. Well, let's get the foundation set. Because how you, the things you do on a daily basis create the foundation for which everything else can flourish or you can build upon. So if, let's say they do all those things, you get the sleep squared away, you get the, uh, the exercise, nutrition, I still don't feel well. That's where we will bring in hormones. So just specialists. on a quick note, so when people say that, which many do, so they're looking to get in shape, but then they immediately go to, uh, let's look at to HRT, TRT. Mm. Many think that's the quick fix, or that's just gonna fix everything without doing the work. So they get their blood work done, mm -hmm. you go to Dr. Fate, and Dr. Fate, you analyze blood work? Correct, yeah. And then from there? Exactly. Yeah, and I will have a sit-down conversation. I'll do a full consultation with my patients and clients. With well. patients. So with Christian, when Christian gives you, uh, so would you send Dr. Fate's blood, the client's blood work to Dr. Fate? So if a client had gotten blood work done by me, I could show it to him. Mm -hmm. Now, Then Dr. he would Fates, help prescribe. Yes, whatever. but he also has his own protocols he does as far as blood work. So if I had them do a comprehensive enough panel, I'm sure you can work with that. But mm -hmm. a lot of doctors like to do their own because they're like, I know you got it done somewhere else. But I want to make sure I have see everything I need to see because they're very comprehensive. His blood work is very comprehensive. And it's not just, hey, let's look at your cholesterol and look at, look at your um, basic, basic markers. So, Dr. Right. Fay, let's talk about the basic blood work. So someone goes to the conventional doctor. They get the blood work and, and you know, typically, you know, whatever comes back, they'll say you're fine when right. basically they can't be fine. What, what's that differentiating factor? Yeah, that's a huge thing. That's why I love working with you know, people like Kristen who can recognize that fact and dig in because I'll have you know, you know, patients and clients come to me just for that. They've been to their doctor or they've been somewhere and oftentimes it's, it's, it's good, but a lot of times it's not. If they've been to a traditional medical doctor or someone else, sometimes it's good enough, but a lot of times there's some missing pieces and I'll have to dial, like, he's, like Kristen said, I'll, I have a very comprehensive set that I dig a little bit deeper than the, what's been you know, traditionally done and I'll have to look at that. And then number two, what I hear all the time is that I, I, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and everybody says my stuff's normal, my labs are normal, so I don't understand why I'm still feeling this way. Well, there's a big difference between normal and optimal. 
And that's something that the medical world has been slow to recognize, at least in, in, in the traditional sense. And that's why I get patients dialed in, because there's a huge difference. And you can still be quote unquote normal on the lab slip, but you're still having symptoms. There's some other underlying issues that need to be addressed, and I will go through all that. So you're digging deep, then, you know, it's not just here, take a pill, you know, Correct. treating a symptom. You're identifying the root of the problem, and then giving them, like you said earlier, Christian, is TRT may not even be on the radar. HRT might not even be on the radar. Let's start with the basics. Mm -hmm. You know, what are you eating, your lifestyle, and identify mm -hmm. needs and deficiencies. Then from there, make the assessment and then prescribe the nutrition plan and the workout, which you exactly. do extremely well. Yeah. Uh, Christian, let's talk about TRT, and, and Doc, you can uh, interject uh, when you like. But there's many myths out there about TRT, testosterone, causing cancer, and all these different mm -hmm. things. So let's, let's put some of those myths to, to bed. Okay, so <laughs> there's tons of good information out there, there's a lot of bad information, and there's a lot of confusing information. And for years, people thought, oh, if I go on testosterone, I'm gonna get cancer. The reality is, if your levels are not optimal, your body's not producing what it should in order to help you live a healthy life, you're actually at a higher risk of disease. Now, I'm not talking about the gym bro that you go to, hey man, what should I use and how much, right? If, you, if you're using super physiological doses and using way too much, that's a whole other story. We're talking about replacement, replacing what your body did make. Which Christian and, and Doc, what would you say? What, what, what do you think is the average for someone who's low on TRT? What would be that average? I know everyone's different mm -hmm. uh, in regards to TRT dosage. So, I mean, common is anywhere from between 100 to 200 milligrams per week. Again, it does vary depending yeah. on the person. No, right. That's a common area. Yeah, and it very much depends on their symptoms because there's, we can dive into, it has a lot to do with genetics and lifestyle and uh, inflammation, many other factors, but genetics is huge. So one guy, I'd say, gets X amount of testosterone, his level, say, 500, feels amazing, mm -hmm. perfect. Another guy at 500, doing everything else the same, feels terrible. So it's because of genetic variations, which I won't get into, like, the nuances of it, basically it determines how well it's effective for them. And then, then we have to delve into the other stuff, too, right? You know, like we talked about, let's get the foundations. Do you even need it, first of all? Because let's fix your nutrition, lifestyle, stressors. I dig deep into what I call, you know, muscle medicine and cellular health because a lot of times there's some underlying mitochondrial issues, inflammatory issues, gut issues that need to be addressed, too. So I've covered all that. We yeah. talk about yeah. that all the time. Huge. Yeah. Inf Huge. Inf and actually, as, as an example, uh, Dr. Fett and I were just talking about this. I had a client who I'd worked with on nutrition. Uh, this is this past year. You know, whatever reason, had to go on his own, and then I reached back out to him just to check on him. Hey, Ralph, how you doing? And he's like, man, I'm just not feeling good. I have no energy. I'm struggling just to get to the gym. And the first thing I ask, is it a schedule thing, or are you just sort of feeling lazy and you're not right here? He's like, yeah, I'm just not doing what I should. So he's like, we got on the conversation of TRT, and he's like, yeah, I was thinking about doing that just to get things, get things going, to get me started. And I'm like, whoa, backwards. I'm like, how's your sleep? Oh, it's terrible. I'm getting like four or five hours a night. What's your stress like? Eh, eight to nine out of 10. All right, what are you eating? Yeah, I'm eating out all the time, donuts for breakfast. I'm like, guy, we have to get all of that squared first. away first. I'm like, you don't even know if you're a candidate for it. And also, sure, your levels might be lower than they could be right now because of how you're living. Once we improve that, they can go up and then maybe you'll feel great. Then you don't need any TRT. Correct, it's like, let's not take the medical approach sooner than we need to. Because either way, you're still just gonna be chasing your tail, mm -hmm. right? You can inject and you still don't feel right, now what? Yeah, and I have some patients that are on the flip side, they're, maybe they're very old, advanced metabolic conditions and you know, diabetes, and, all, and they may need some therapeutic invention right away just to get them going, because they're trying to do everything right, and they are doing stuff, but they, they do need that extra help. And then we can maybe fiddle with the later. Just, but, but you're constantly monitoring. Monitoring that. But then on the flip side, the other guys, especially the young guys, like you said, and I had, we were just talking about this, so I had a you know, patient see. Who are easily influenced also. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So you got to fix the basics first. And it's about setting expectations too, right? A lot of, as we know, a lot of people just want a quick fix or they just want, they have the different thoughts of what this is going to do. I, I tell people, say, it's, it's, you know, if you go on testosterone or thyroid, it's not a Red Bull. You're not going to be bounced off the walls and jacked in, in, in a week. It's just not going to happen. Let's, we have yeah. to set the expectations and the groundwork mm -hmm. and the foundational things we're talking about first. Yeah, well, you guys are on the same page, same book, same sentence. So yeah. that's, that's awesome. So we're going to go on to the next topic. But before we do that, uh, Christian and Doc, Christian, a few tips uh, for men to increase their testosterone levels. Okay, first and foremost, sleep. If there was any magic bullet to talk about, it's sleep. Sleep is where your body recovers. It helps with fat burning, it helps with building strength, it helps with cognitive function, everything, healing wounds, your mental health. Sleep is so important, I put it in the top three most important things that 
you can do as a human being. That's first. Another is get yourself some regular movement. It doesn't mean you have to go in the gym and act like a bodybuilder, right? Just get some movement and make your body stronger, especially for men. Because mm -hmm. as men, primarily we want to conquer, we want to be strong, we want to provide, we want to protect. If your body, your vessel is not strong, you're not gonna look at yourself in a confident way and be able to have great relationships and stand up tall with your chin up and your shoulders back, right? When you go into a conversation, you're gonna feel like kind of the odd man out because you don't feel good about yourself. You wanna, I'm a firm believer that every man should be his kid's superhero. And if you don't build a strong body, which will help you create a strong mind, you're not gonna be that. Right, awesome. Doctor. Yeah, same thing. Very, I will echo some of those. Sleep and stress are top two and environment and mindset are the environment, five, the top mindset, four. All factors. That goes back to talking about when we're talking about brain tap and mm -hmm. you know, everything affects everything. the entire human body. The, the mind, the physical. And we're so, saying words are very powerful. How you talk to yourself, how you talk to your... Self-talk, great point. It's huge. Mm -hmm. And environment, it's a stressor. environment is big. You know, get outside, get some fresh air, get some sun, touch the grass. Communicate with people. Put the damn phones down and connect. Put with it other all people. down, right? Put it all down. Put it all down. Shut down. And, and to, ta to tag move, on move, to that, move. think about when we get stressed, when we've got work, because all of us are busy, right? When work gets to us and we're just crazy stressed, where do we go to try to get away from that? Nature. We go to the beach. We want to hear the water. We want to be in the sun. The seagulls, right? Maybe yep. not the seagulls. Which, as we both know, like you just put that up, what does that do to the brave, uh, the brave land, brain land, yeah. the brave waves? Yeah, you feel out. clarity. Yeah. You, you know, better. it's. And that's exactly. the problem. People do the opposite. They go inside, they go on social media, they go on the phone. Mm -hmm. Get outside and move. You can combine things at once. Walk, move, that's sun, That's right. All that brain's once. operating at a frequency. You have yes. to dial it down. So, mm -hmm. you know, the water, the doing things, sunlight, yes. all those different things. But we're going to dive into uh, next uh, segment. We're going to dive into building lean muscle, weight loss, as soon as we come back. Rob Fletcher, Muscle Fitness Plus Talk Show. We are here with Christian and Dr. Fate. Welcome back. I'm here with Christian Palmer and Dr. Fate. Today's topic, men's health. What we're going to talk about now is how men can, especially older, you know, over 40, can increase testosterone through natural ways, uh, increase their lean muscle mass, weight loss management, um, all those things that you can do to increase your testosterone without actually having to go on TRT. So, Christian, we'll start with you first. Uh, increasing fat loss and building lean muscle. Okay. First and foremost, what I tell my guys is prioritize protein. Protein comprises your skin, hair, nails, eyes. It's the most important macronutrient we can consume. Without it, you will die. And if you want to build muscle, you absolutely need it. So one, make that the foundation of your meals. It's always easy to get carbs in and fats. They tend to take care of themselves, but protein is the one that a lot of people struggle to get. So I'll say, make that the foundation of your meals, and then do some resistance training. Do what you can. Some people say, oh, I'm afraid of getting hurt. Which can greatly enhance testosterone. 100%, yeah. yeah. And the fat, exercising in and of itself releases endorphins. It makes you feel good, and you want another hit of that. It changes your mindset, right. Yes, and that has an effect on Dopamine your testosterone. Effect, right. Correct. And also, during and after exercise, you have an acute elevation in testosterone. So you do that over a series of days, and then it becomes your habit. You will release more testosterone as a result of being stronger and having this journey of getting more fit. It, it, I cannot state how important it is to work on your body because when you feel good, you'll do good things and you'll want more of it. It's a self... Uh, it's, a, it's all a habit. Yes, You're exactly. You're developing a, a good habit, a yes. positive habit. Correct. Taking away from those negative habits where you're looking for that external fix to mm -hmm. increase the dopamine effect, mm -hmm. but when you have to face it, and as the saving uh, David Goggins, you, know, you have to be... You have to face the discomfort. Yes. You know, yep. you have to live through that discomfort, mm -hmm. and that's ultimately going to get you to that level of mm -hmm. feeling good about yourself. And the same with weight loss. Yeah. So, you know, building muscle, the more muscle you have. Chris, explain the difference between weight loss and fat loss. Okay. So weight is just what comprises your body, right? There's skin, there's muscle, there's fat. Fat loss is specifically losing fat, ideally while maintaining or gaining muscle. So when you go into a fat loss diet, it's not about, I'm just gonna cut all calories and cut all carbs, as people demonize Which them. is doing it the right way. 
Correct. Well, yeah, you want exactly maintaining the muscle and losing the fat. And remember that muscle is the engine for the metabolism. So the more muscle you have, exactly, the higher that RPM revs. And then that makes fat loss, I'm not going to say easier, but simpler. Because you've got an engine that's bigger, it burns more calories, so during movement and at rest, you can potentially burn more fat. And then the people that are going, you know, women, women I think more so, you know, they're looking to, I, I have to lose 20 pounds, and mm. then they go into either starvation mode. Mm -hmm. uh, explain, uh, Dr. Fee, explain uh, the difference when you go into that, um, whatever is crazy, diet or, you know, starvation mode where you right. think you're actually losing weight when you're doing more damage than good. Yeah, like you said, there's a big difference between weight and fat. A lot of times these crazy diets, it's, you're losing a lot of water weight. And if you continue it, if you go into actual starvation mode, you're going to start losing muscle. You'll lose fat, but you're going to lose muscle. Mm -hmm. And then you get what's called a rebound effect. As your body's trying to build it back on, you're going to gain weight. That's why I practice what I, my practice is what I call muscle medicine and hormonal fitness because I focus on the muscle, not just putting off for the, he for the heck of it, but... The muscle is the most important and one of the largest endocrine organs in the body, not just for testosterone, but all your hormones. It secretes uh, productive chemicals called myokines that have a lot of beneficial effects on the brain, on the bone, the heart, and so many other things. And they, all of the hormones are interconnected. So by addressing that, you're going to improve your metabolism, improve how, you, improve how you handle blood sugar, and it's going to help you burn the fat. So by building your muscle up, you're going to shed the fat, and you're going to feel better. And that's why, you know, like I tell my, pa my patients, I said, I want you to live to give. And you feel better by yourself so you can give to other people, be a better husband, father, mm -hmm. You know, wife, whatever. Impacts it everything. Be. It impacts everything. Trickle effect. So focus on the muscle, focus on your metabolism, and then the other thing is to focus on energy. Your body needs energy to run on. And what I see a, a lot of problems with is are extremes. Everybody's like, oh, carbs are bad, or all fat's mm -hmm. bad, or I'm going to fast 24 hours, 10 days a week, or you know. And you're a roller coaster. You can't do that. You're yeah. a roller coaster. Yeah. You got to mix it up. You got to have some consistency, right. like Chris said. You focus on the protein, focus on strength training, but mix it up, change it up a little bit. Don't carbs aren't bad, fats aren't bad, but you got to do it in the right way and rotate it around in a certain fashion. You know, you cut all your carbs, you're gonna not gonna have energy, and then you're not gonna be able to do what you need to do. So the right carbs at the right time. So it's not just what you eat, it's when you eat and, and how you do it. Yeah. So Christian, when you're out there, you know, especially your 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 awesome content, one on your channel, again, Relentless Fitness and Nutrition on Muscle Fitness Plus, awesome channel. Um, you're talking about, you know, you talk about the different topics and there's the short little posts that you put out there, um, building lean muscle, but protein, mm. you know, when you're giving a baseline for how much protein to consume, you, know, you put one out the other day. So explain what the average would be for someone looking to intake. What, does you, what should they be looking for with the number of, amount of protein per day? Okay, so a good medium place to be is going to be 1.0 grams per pound of lean body weight, right? So if you're looking to, even if you're looking to just maintain what you have, some people think, well, I probably need less. Possibly, but it's a good general place to be. And remember that protein, no matter what your pursuit is, you don't have to change the amount because you want to maintain that muscle. Once you build it, you've got to keep it. So if you drop your protein, you can lose it. Mm -hmm. So once you get to that level of protein, build the rest of your nutrition plan around that because that is the foundation of it. So give them a, a basic, and again, I know there's no cookie cutter. But for someone looking to get in shape, they're going to the gym, we'll, we'll go back to a simple strength program. But let's talk uh, about nutrition, meals, you know, a basic guideline to get started. Assuming, you know, no allergies or, or such, mm. but what would you provide or what information could you give to get started? Okay, so the first thing I'd say is if you're not, if you know that you're not eating well on a daily basis and really none of your meals, meals are good or things are very haphazard, start simple. It's very easy to become... Uh, to be overwhelmed. So I'll tell some of my clients who come to me and they're like, it's a sticky bun for breakfast with a coffee with all sugar and you know, whatever kind of uh, Starbucks coffee. And then for lunch, it's whatever I can grab. It might be McDonald's, it might be. And then for dinner, it's like a huge you know, processed food meal and whatever that might be. Start with breakfast, right? Maybe it's a bowl of oatmeal with some berries in it. And then you either have some eggs with it or some protein powder. And once you get that squared away and breakfast is now a healthy habit for two weeks maybe, then move on to lunch. Some people do it a lot sooner, but small manageable steps is the important mm -hmm. part because you need to turn this into a habit. It's a lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle. It's not, oh, for eight weeks I'm gonna go hard. And, and realistic goals. Yes. Realistic goals. Because this is something you should be able to do for the rest of your life, indefinitely. Without it being exhausting or too Correct. much, you're like, I can't do this, right? Exactly. Uh, so Dr. Fee, talk about what you do. I know you work a lot with the, the trainers. Mm -hmm. um, they go to you, but talk about your program that you have uh, for trainers where they can come to you and, and get consultations or help advise their clients who maybe, like in Christian's case, need to do the blood work or et cetera. 
Correct. Now, thanks. Yeah, and um, it's a, basically my, my Primex partnership program where I work with trainers and other nutritionists like Christine who will, uh, their clients, their patients need that extra step, whether it's metabolism or inflammation or hormone therapy or wondering just what the heck is going on. Is there something else? So uh, we'll do a program where they will refer them to me and I will do that comprehensive lab panel or any other extra steps uh, and tests and then do a consultation, put a program together, and then I will coordinate that with the trainer too so, and we'll make sure we're on the same path. Here's their training, here's their nutrition, and then here's their medication or their hormonal plan or maybe some supplementation or whatever that may be. And then obviously there, you know, there's, you know, we, we share on some of that on the backside to, to make it worth their time. Um, and then it's a win-win-win. So the client's getting happy because they're getting finally getting results because they're, like we talked about earlier, they're not normal anymore. They're going to be optimal, you know, and then they're getting the, what they need from the trainer. And so it's a win-win-win. So everybody's happy. And we're finally taking it to the next level of filling in those missing pieces, missing pieces. Like I tell people on their health, it's like the, the gears of a machine, right? You have health and nutrition and fitness and supplementation, and hormones and metabolism. If one of those gears is off, the wheel's not spinning. So we got to put, put it together. Well, when you think of all those things that you just mentioned, it's almost hard to believe that your trainers are not working with doctors mm. because there's so many things that have to work together to optimize the health and performance. So really, trainers that are not working with doctors, they're truly cheating their clients and members because they're not really enhancing their health or performance, you know, yeah. whether an athlete or just uh, just a client going day to day, and then they wonder why they're not seeing changes. You know, they could be. I've seen, I see uh, trainers who are with clients for years, and the client looks the same. Mm -hmm. There's no change. And, the thing, and like what Kristen said earlier, there's so much information out there; it's overload. But I think our job, and what I love to do, and I know Kristen does the same thing, is really simplifying it down. It doesn't. A diet doesn't have to taste bad or feel deprived. You know, a, a, a nutrition, metabolic pharmaceutical, whatever plan can be, can be simple. And if we break it down, then we can make it consistent. Then they can right. stick with it long term. Small goals, small benchmarks. One step at a time. Mm -hmm. yeah, make small it gradual simple. changes. Yeah, break it down and make it easily understandable. Uh, we have a couple minutes before we go to our next uh, break. Christian, strength training. And again, I know everyone's different. Just give uh, someone you know, a few simple movements that they could do, you know, full body, full body workout. Could be body weight, could be you know, resistance training depending on what they have, but what mm -hmm. would you recommend? You know, of course, squats is a great one, body weight or just mm -hmm. regular, but go ahead, give them, give them three to five exercises they can start doing at home just to get started. So as humans, we all do the same movements. Think about if you're picking your kids up off the floor. It's a hinge, maybe it's a squat. If you have to push yourself off the floor, that's a chest press. So generally you want to use compound movements. Just like Rob said, that's your hinging patterns or deadlifting. That's your squatting patterns. Right, those are your pressing patterns, and those are the ones that are generally make up what I call the meat and potatoes of your regimen. And from there, you can do the you know more nuanced things like your bicep curls and your hamstring curls and whatnot. But in general, a goal should be to always look for progress. There's a lot of people who go in the gym and they pick an amount of weight and somehow decide that's great for them. And I'll just stick with this. But think about finances when you want to make more money. Do you just say? Eh, I think I'm good at a thousand bucks a month. No, you want to make more. So next month, maybe it's 1500, maybe it's 2000. When you go in the gym, maybe every week, every other week, maybe every third week, it depends on your specific needs. But make sure that you're keeping track of your progress and that you're actually making progress. And if you aren't, reach out to someone for help. As men, we're stubborn. We think, I got it, bro. That's right. Just reach out to someone if you don't know what you're doing or you're not happy with your results. Could someone be a like game Dr. Changer. Fate, like Could myself. Could be a game changer for him. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, a simple phone call. Yes. Yes. You said very, something very important um, is um, progress and journaling, I believe. Mm -hmm. Journaling, you know, that's why I align with progress. So how do, we, how do we look at our progress? You know, I always like to write a journal, not just with exercise, but just day-to-day mm -hmm. -day living. You know, yeah. what was my day like? Could I be better? Mm -hmm. Where did I not do too well? Where can I do better? Mm -hmm. So I think journaling is big. So, Doc, before we go to break, what are some um, good strength movements or, or applications that uh, someone could do. Yeah, perfect, I, and, and same thing, and I'll look at what you just said, if you track it and measure it, whether it's lab work, your, your reps in the gym, write it down, track it, measure it, and you know what's wrong, what's not wrong. Strength movements, I'm, again, I'm a big, uh, uh, functional movement is key. Even if you just get outside and walk, you know, that's a basic functional movement, but lift some heavy stuff, you know, do it, it doesn't, you could be your own body weight if you have to, but lifting things, pulling things, um, dragging things, just carry, pick up something heavy and carry it around, it could be a kettlebell, that could be a sack of, uh, you know, big sack of uh, grain or whatever, something like that. Just a functional movement to work every muscle in your body. It doesn't have to be hard. You, it could be done in Keep 10 minutes. Keep it simple. I, I, I love the application. Keep it simple. Realistic goals. Yeah, it could be, exactly. you know, it could be a 15-minute workout. Wanna, you don't want to go all out seven days and then one and done. Mm -hmm. So 
Rob Fletcher, Muscle and Fitness Plus Talk Show, Christian Palmer, Dr. Fate, all right here. We'll be back. Back, Muscle and Fitness Plus talk show. We're talking about men's health. We're talking a lot about TRT. There's a lot of unanswered questions out there and a lot of myths to testosterone. Uh, testosterone can improve your life, the quality of life, especially if you're low, but it's doing it the right way. It's being monitored correctly. Uh, so, Christian, I'll start with you. Uh, we talked about myths, but let's talk about uh, one myth is, well, I, I can't say it's a myth. I'll let you both answer this. Uh, testosterone causes cancer. So, yeah, as mentioned, you know, we had kind of chatted before is that there's a lot of good information and a lot of bad information. And just because someone told you this in the gym or you read it in some random magazine or your bro told you doesn't mean you should believe it. Testosterone in and of itself in a healthy body does not cause cancer. In fact, it can prevent you and does prevent you from getting certain diseases. And we talk about prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. Someone who has low T is more susceptible to uh, um, a lack of cardiac health and other diseases because they don't have the amount of testosterone they need. Now again, if you're doing it, shooting in the dark, no pun intended, yeah. and you're just going based on what you read on some random forum or you heard some guy in the gym who was jacked and you think he knows what you, know, what you need to, to do, you don't know what's actually happening. You need to connect yourself with an individual like Dr. Fate and use the right amounts, the right kind, get it the right way, and you'll prevent yourself from getting disease. So uh, back to, again, testosterone, but side effects. Mm. Uh, there's a lot out there, but I do want to uh, work off what you just said. I think everything comes down to, uh, one, of course, knowing what you're doing, being educated on what you're doing, especially when it comes down to injecting something in mm -hmm. yourself. But uh, it depends on the quality of what you're getting. If you're doing it the wrong way, of course, I believe that you know, when they say cancer, anything can happen. I mean, dependent upon, if you're asking a question of are we doing it the right way or the wrong way? But now we're doing it the right way, but are there side effects? When we, get, we, got, we got TRT prescription, we're doing it the right way. What are some of the consequences or side effects of TRT? So, I mean, some guys will say that they get, sometimes they get bloating. Sometimes there's water retention. And some of these things are not permanent and can depend on, like Dr. Fate will, will mention, um, I'm sure dosage has something to do with that, your internal health, um, your lifestyle, stress, right? It's like inflammation. These things all play a role. But at the very least, I'll say that it's a good thing if done correctly, and I wouldn't even necessarily say that side effects are something you have to worry about, but should they happen, they're generally minimal mm -hmm. if done correctly, and most of them are, are fairly easy to to solve. And then if you have a side effect, what's the first thing you do? You call, if, you, if I'm working with you and I say, to hey, Christian, you know, we, want, we talk to the doctor, I'm on the TRT, and I'm feeling this or that, mm -hmm. that's why you open that line call of me. communication to you and the doctor, and then you have to adjust. Exactly. It might exactly. be a simple thing as, you know, modifying the dosage or whatever it might be. Yeah, and then you call me, and that's what I'm here for, you know, mm -hmm. and with the, with the prostate, you know, people talk about side effects, and it's like, it's really is minimal. Occasionally, you can get a slight bump in your PSA in the first six, 12 months, but it's very minimal. Uh, and like we talked about before, it's actually the lower your testosterone level, you have a higher risk of getting a cancer. Even if you have it, they, they grade it and call it Gleason score. The lower, the, the, the better, the higher, the worse it is. But the people who actually have a cancer, the lower the testosterone, the more aggressive it is, and the worst prognosis they have if they actually develop a cancer. So men, in general, again, do better at a higher level. So that was a myth based on one, you know, an erroneous lab test from years ago. But 
it's a complete myth. It does not cause it. So, but in terms of you know monitoring your, your levels, that's one of the things that can come up. But typically with side effects, uh, yeah, the most common thing is if, if you're being done therapeutically the right way, I rarely have any side effects at all. Occasionally, in the first few months, some guys, like Chris said, will get some water retention we'll issues. Bloated, right. But th I, I rarely have that. And again, if it's monitored properly, it's not going to be a problem. But there are a few men who are very sensitive to it, and it's not really because of the testosterone, it's because of the, uh, the body senses it's like uh, a stress hormone. There's, uh, in your kidneys, there's little receptors that, you know, cortisol and stress hormones, and there's another hormone called aldosterone. You're, you're, when you're dehydrated, your body turns that on to help you retain water. So in some people, they're more sensitive to that testosterone, and it senses that, oh, this testosterone, they think it's, your body thinks it's aldosterone, so it retains more. And there's ways around that. Um, the other one I see is occasionally guys worry about their blood counts getting too high. And then there's that myth of, oh, I got thick blood, I'm going to get a blood clot. And that's a complete myth. It does not happen. There's people living at altitude in Denver, et cetera, who have the same numbers, and they're doing just fine. They don't get blood clots and all these things. So, and again, I typically don't see that when guys are doing it the wrong way, they're not monitored, or they're doing too much, or there's something else going on. That's what I'm body. saying. So when they say that, it depends on the degree of, you know, what mm -hmm. are you doing? Are right. you doing it the right way or the wrong way? Right. And how much are you doing? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So back to, I want to talk about vitamin supplementation. So Christian, uh, simple basic vitamins that people should be looking into, not necessarily or taking, but looking mm -hmm. into uh, for a healthy lifestyle potential supplements, like a probiotic, a prebiotic, D3, C, E. Mm -hmm. what, are your, what are your top recommendations for vitamins and supplements? So first that comes to mind is vitamin D. There are a lot of people who are deficient in it, mm -hmm. and it's very easy to solve in most people. It's take a good source of it, and that usually will solve your problem. The other thing is, and I'm going to be redundant on this, is food. The best way for your body to get nutrients is through the food that you eat. And there's a lot of people who have nutrient deficiencies because they have such a limited diet. They get up in the morning again. They have the coffee and maybe a piece of toast. And then for lunch, they're like, I had a grilled chicken salad, which is not a magic food. I don't know who said it was. And there's so many different great sources of protein, like red meat, which has also been demonized, and it's not bad if it's great quality. But when it comes to vitamins, once you get a good diet, you can have a vitamin panel done. See if you got enough A, D, E, and K, and all of your uh, essential uh, minerals. And then you can supplement. You know, Get yourself a good multivitamin or a specific vitamin that you're low in, like D. Right. So, uh, probiotics, prebiotics? Yeah, what I was going to add on is I agree with the vitamin D, and I always add vitamin K. How, how many I use of vitamin D? I hear different things. 2,500, 5,000? I, I hear up to 5,000. 5,000 is usually you good do. for most. Mm -hmm. Some people need more. Yeah. Um, and I always pair with vitamin K because it's very part, important for heart health. That works with the D. Yeah. That works together. And magnesium is the other big one. Everybody's magnesium deficient in magnesium. Zinc. Zinc. Zinc often, but again, usually you can get that from food. Yeah. Yeah. But even with food, most people are uh, magnesium deficient. deficient. Yeah. And it does you know, hundreds of processes in the body important for meta testosterone metabolism, all your hormones, and everything. Uh, so on your, back to your blood work, what, what is it, what are the top things that you look for uh, in your panels? I know every, you know, you have different panels out mm -hmm. there, but what are the, some of the top things that you look for uh, when you get that blood work result back? The biggest thing is metabolic uh, uh, issues or infl inflammatory conditions, because that can affect everything. It can affect your insulin, your blood sugar, your cholesterol, your heart health. Um, What's the number one killer of men and women? It's heart health, it's heart disease, right? So I always look for that first. Fatty liver is a big issue, so I always look at your liver enzymes and look at markers of inflammation like uh, high sensitivity. The liver, CRP. many people take a beating. The liver Huge. takes a beating. It's massively mm -hmm. important. Yeah. And that can often be the first indication of, of heart disease or metabolic syndrome mm -hmm. or diabetes. And, you know, we all know how prevalent diabetes and obesity is in the country uh, because of insulin resistance and fatty liver, and it's from inflammation and a you know, crappy diet. And just, you know, we live inflamed lives with all the toxins in the food. People eating, you know, bad stuff, you know, stress, etc. So, I, and of course, I look at all the hormones, and I'll usually do a deep dive in like a lipid panel because, again, heart disease is very important. And way beyond the typical LDL, HDL, I, I look at the the very specific breakdown markers like APOB and oxidized LDL and all these other things. So, now, how common is it? So, Christian, when you get a blood work, when you look at blood work, you know, of course, you can't prescribe. But do you have a basic understanding of of what's going on when you see a panel, or do you just completely give that over to the doctor and he? We'll refer back to you on what to go do next. Yes, so I have an understanding of blood work. You know, the basic things that you look for with a lot of individuals, like I have guys that come to me with high fasting glucose, right? And that's an indicator that you are insulin resistant. And building muscle, of course, improving what you eat can help with that. You can also look at cholesterol levels, triglycerides. You know, these are, are things that when you talk about metabolic disease, these are the things that were, when you get blood work done and you see these are not where they need to be, you're either on your way there or you're there. 
And a big one is fasting glucose. That's one that I pay a lot of attention to. Uh, and then you've got A1C, which is a longer, essentially extrapolated version of that. But those generally are your, your very basics when you have someone get a comprehensive metabolic panel. Those are the ones that I'll look at first, just kind of scan through, and everything else is important, electrolytes and all that stuff, but those are the ones that more, that, that more commonly tend to be affected when someone doesn't have a good lifestyle and not eating well, not exercising, mm. not sleeping well. Sleep plays a huge role. Yeah. So, and even with blood pressure and like sleep apnea, yeah. and if you're overweight, that can drive blood pressure what, what up. What can people do? What, what's, what's a protocol? You know, we dived into it a little bit today. I mean, great topics. Um, or other segments with Ocean and you know Dr. Porter um, on, on what to do to, to get better rest recovery. What the recommendations or suggestions would you give for people to get better sleep? Would you prescribe or would you mm -hmm. recommend, like of course they have things out there like melatonin, they, magnesium, I know people mm -hmm. that take magnesium prior to sleep or try to help them sleep. Would you have recommendations and also for you, Dr. T? Yep. The first thing I'll say is get on a good sleep schedule, right? You Consistent. Can, yes. Because, and I've had th this issues with this also, where you've got a lot going on. I mean, Dr. Fate is busy. And when you have a lot on your mind and you lay down to go to sleep and like the world is speaking sleep. to you. Yeah, I gotta do this tomorrow. I gotta make this phone call. This patient did that, you know? That'd be me. Yes, right? <laughs> and then guys will say, I have problems going to, guys will say, I have problems going to sleep. And they'll say, oh, you know, I just grab a beer. Or some people use NyQuil yeah. or melatonin. The that, problem that's is- That's just drawing, that's yeah. where I draw yes. the line. And the problem is it helps you fall asleep but it messes oh, up things. your ladder, the ladder yeah, portion of your sleep. So you what may think foods? you're doing- What about like turkey, there's tryptophan or those types of things, anything there? Yeah, no, not really. Yeah, I mean, really. they don't have a large effect no, on your body, and it's not everyone. What about taking tryptophan like a, as a supplement? Some people it can help. Some people. Some people. My, my big thing, and I agree with Christian with the schedule, my day starts in the morning. So the main sleep. thing from takeaway for, with Christian was, let's do this consistently. Let's get yep. to yes. bed at the right time instead of being very erratic. Yeah, and get off your phone or device 30 Shut minutes down, an hour right, prior. 30 minutes Because that blue light yeah, is great, stimulating. Right, exactly, 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and speaking of light, it starts with the day. So get outside and face the sun. Move towards the sun. Get a thing called optic flow, right? Yeah. And get your circadian rhythm starting to get... Set. And so the start not, of the day, so that's yeah. not even at the end so of the day. And that, that was brought yeah. up earlier as well. Yeah, because it's not going to help you wake, but it's actually, studies have shown that's going to help you increase your melatonin production at night. So mm -hmm. waking up and getting that light and movement in the day is going to help you sleep better at night. Get up at the same time, go to bed at the same time every night, get your rhythm in place. Turn, and like, like Christian said, I'm a big fan of like killing all the lights. You know, red lights everywhere, didn't, get off your phone, get off your devices, and take a hot shower, hot, shot, hot bath, do some relaxation, mind work, breath work. Chill your head out. That, uh, you know, they even say when you, if you do get up in the middle of the night, you turn, as soon as you turn that light on, mm -hmm. it totally don't changes it. the don't game. Don't do it. Yeah, it leave does. it out. Just turn it on. You go to, don't you turn the light like on. Batman, go to the bathroom. Yeah. You'll, fix the, you'll fix it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. Christian, in closing, uh, we have a couple minutes left. Uh, Christian, closing, a few tips they could take away and start their day with uh, a game changer. So break things down and make them simple for you. Small manageable steps, because if you look at changing everything at once, I'm gonna change, you know, I'm gonna start going to the gym Monday, I'm gonna go six days this week. I'm gonna change everything I'm eating. I'm gonna you know, start meditating every day. No, no, no. Start with one meal. Let's make breakfast well, or make breakfast good, right? Then, let's go to the gym one day this week. And maybe you say that's ridiculously easy. All right, then go two days. And go for a 15 minute walk every day this week. Just things that are simple because you Where need wins. Where you can succeed. Wins. Exactly. You set yourself up for success. Correct, because then winning, you win. winning like begets winning. Always your one win. Exactly. Yeah. One win each day. And when you win, you're going to want more. So it's going to encourage you to go more consistently. Get your blood work done. If you, I come across this with guys all the time. We're stubborn. As men, we are stubborn. I'll be fine until you dropped out of a heart attack. If you haven't had blood work done in a long time, and I would even say within a year, get your get blood done. work done. Blood does not lie. It'll tell you what's going right. on, and then you can address it. If your blood it. could talk, what would it say? Mine? Yeah, no, so that's what's happening. <laughs> oh, that's oh, like, you would say I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Me. Fee, let's close it with you. What would you, a couple of game-changing tips for people? Yep. Small, gradual changes from Christian. You know, dial in, set yourself for success. Every day, a little win. Yeah, so my thing is, my mantra is live to give, right? I want people to feel good about themselves so they can give back to people, and it starts with your day. Get up five minutes early and take some time for yourself. Your inner world creates your outer world. So if you focus awesome. positively, think about yourself, say some gratitude, say a prayer, journal. Gratitude, there we go. Start, mm -hmm. it also, you know, everybody has five minutes in the morning to just get outside, like I said, walk, say, you know, say a prayer or journal or do something nice and talk positively about yourself and get your day going and then get moving. How Move. powerful is that? Self-talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Self-talk yeah. is very powerful. The yeah. mind is very powerful. And then hit the body, get moving. Get, and like Kristen said, you don't have to diet. You can just do simple things. You could work out in 15 minutes. Everybody's got 15 minutes. 
eating, it doesn't have to taste bad. Just mm -hmm. do change one thing. Reach the goal. Yeah. Set the goal, reach Set that the goal. Set the goal, and feel good about yourself, and then live to give. Give back. Live to give. Live Dr. To give, Fee, Christian Palmer, Rob Fletcher, Muscle and Fitness Plus talk show. Optimize your life, optimize your health, optimize your performance.